Well, hello and welcome to episode 161 of Drink the Movies. I'm Brian here as always with Michaela. And Michaela, um, if you happen to be born in the 1980s, uh, like we were, not to date ourselves too much, uh, you had a couple of options as kids, right? Uh, they, were, they were both creepy. Uh, you were either a Dark Crystal family or you are a labyrinth family uh now i will say i am a dark crystal uh kid myself you are a labyrinth kid uh yourself but a couple of things are true right uh the dark crystal pretty creepy uh labyrinth also pretty creepy uh like parents and adults what were you doing to kids uh back in the 80s on a side note but the labyrinth has something that the dark crystal doesn't have that's david bowie that is david bowie it's uh it's amazing it's a it's the first instance i ever saw of a man someone who identified as a man wearing like insane eye makeup and i loved it mm. i thought he was so fan fascinating i was like six when i first saw this film maybe less than that i might have been five and i was like who is that goblin king as he's singing <laughs> me songs about wow. hell and and having this he had these balls that he's like that that floated in the air and these magical crystal things it's amazing amazing stuff yeah. yeah that's right he's uh he's trying to rig the game against uh jennifer Connolly there as we go through our uh childlike adventure in labyrinth and that is what we we're talking about today uh dark crystal is going to have to wait uh for its own show uh someday and maybe we can compare and contrast the two but yeah we were talking about labyrinth it is a classic uh you grew up with it as i mentioned i had never really seen it until uh just this week uh it hits a little bit differently as an adult maybe i don't know we'll get into the, all that for sure uh but before we do that michaela what we need to do is we need to come up with a cocktail uh that is really good you know something we can whip up in i don't know let's say 13 hours that's how long we get uh here in the labyrinth so let's do that let's take a quick break and we'll be right back to whip up this week's drink so brian this week's cocktail comes from the mighty coconut.com i have no idea why uh this because this is not this is no coconut in it so when i found it's this not. cocktail and i sent it to you i even prefaced it i was like do not panic by the name because the mighty coconut.com does more than whatever coconuts are in that mm -hmm. site yeah yeah uh, my, it's uh, more mighty coconuts i think it's a i think it's a game developing uh site on a side note so they make a mini golf game and i think there's like a labyrinth course i think that's why uh they have yeah. these cocktails on there so did a little digging but yeah this is the 13th hour which is good because you know if you go to the labyrinth uh, to save your uh half brother uh you're only given 13 hours from the goblin king so uh that's enough time to solve the maze and to have one or two of these probably yeah yeah well and you know you get david bowie singing you remind me of the babe you know that's yeah that's great yeah, yeah. then you 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 could do more of that the more gin you drink um but i like this because it's uh yes. it's got all the things that you would expect in a goblin king right it, it's got the sphere um mm -hmm. uh you don't mm -hmm. have to you don't have to present this in a rocks glass with a uh what did they call it a diametrically they called it a a an ungravitational frozen sphere. If you just go to a store and you buy one of those sphere ice. Yeah. The ice cube mold. Yeah. Cube mold. You'll be fine. I, I, if you have one of those, yeah, I think uh, we both have them. Uh, we weren't able to make this together, so uh, we got those in our pictures for sure. But uh, if you don't have that, just use just use a cube. But just know that Jareth is going to come and take a couple hours off the clock uh, if you're using the wrong stuff. So be warned. Be warned. Um, but this is great. So you're going to take an ounce and a half of your favorite gin. Uh, you're going to take an ounce of Bianco. If you don't know what Bianco is, that's a type of vermouth. I didn't really know what it was uh, mm -hmm. until this week. I feel like I knew that before, but I was like, hmm, what is that? Yeah. So Bianco is not, it's not sweet vermouth. So it's not red and it's not dry vermouth. So Bianco is kind of, while it is clear or white, um, the way mm. that a dry vermouth is that you would put in a gin or a vodka martini. Um, this is really in the middle uh, from a sweetness profile. So it's got a, a right. hint of mm -hmm. sweetness to it, um, but it's, it is much more on the dry side than say a sweet vermouth. So go find that. It makes a, a, a really lovely aperitif as well. Um, mm -hmm. If, yep. you know, if you're going to have a sherry hour, I kind of liken this to um, kind of a white sherry um, mm -hmm. is what my, my taste buds were telling me. Yeah. It has some, um... It has a little bit of a sweetness and almost like a like a nuttiness, almost kind of like a like a sweeter, like kind of like almond uh, note to it. It's really delicious. And yeah, you can totally just have a little bit of this uh, over ice uh, if you want, uh, just kind of like any of the other vermouths. We did sweet vermouth uh, on the rocks with the twist, I think, back from our Groundhog Day uh, cocktail there. So definitely could do that. So yeah, one and a half ounces of the gin, one ounce of that Bianco, a half ounce of ginger liqueur, um, and then some yellow chartreuse. Now, it didn't give uh, an amount there uh, on the website, so I used... Uh, 
half ounce of the yellow chartreuse. Uh, Michaela, I don't know what you use, but yellow chartreuse, if you're not familiar with it, it's very, it's made from like 127 like different types of like alpine, like pine cone things in France. Uh, so it's very fancy stuff, but it is really uh, kind of, kind of pine solly almost. Yeah. Um, we tried to find some yellow chartreuse and um, thankfully you had some extra that you let us have, but uh, they gave me this um, Man Mandolo, I think is what it was called that they, they, they said was as close as we could get. And I have to say um, there are pictures of it that we might post on the, on the site. So you can see what it looks like. It was a beautiful bottle, same yellowness, um, mm -hmm. not the same, not the same flavor profile. It had a lot more licorice-y uh, kind of overtones to it than yellow chartreuse, which to me is just a little bit more um, even I'm, I'm not a huge licorice person. So I, I was really glad to use the yellow chartreuse. If you have it, I think it's, um, it's going to balance out the the cocktail a lot better from the ginger and the gin and then the sh and the vermouth. Yeah, you used uh, Galliano, I think, was what you were recommended. Galliano, it's, it's similar in color, called. but but uh, a much different play flavor profile. So uh, a little bit of that in there, and then two dashes of lavender bitters. Uh, go ahead and sh give that a stir with some ice. You want this to be crystal crystal clear uh, to go over your giant uh, ice sphere there, and then strain it into a glass. You can uh, express a lemon. Uh, piece of a uh, lemon rind over that so mm. just to give it a little bit of that uh, essence uh, and sip and enjoy. This is just kind of like a highbrow, high-end, uh, fancy martini basically is what we're mixing up here with the gin and the the Bianco and the little bit of added flavors there. But uh, this was pretty good, Michaela. The yellow chartreuse, as I mentioned, is, is very like pine forward, right? It had, definitely has kind of this pine essence to it. And then the ginger liqueur has... Yeah, obviously is ginger flavored. So it has a little bit of that like ginger spice, but it's still uh, really smooth. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know. What did you what did you think about this one? This was very unique tasting for sure. Yeah, I, I was worried I really wasn't going to like it uh, when we were putting it together. Um, I had texted uh, this to a friend and I like with all the ingredients and they were like, wow, there's a lot going on. And I was like, you're not wrong. Um, so I was a little concerned. Um, I, I didn't get much of the lavender bitters. Um, of it. Mm, uh, okay. and I think that that would have been a little bit brighter. Um, but I loved this cocktail. I thought it was really good. And, um, once the ice started to melt a little bit, it blended even better. Mm -hmm. Um, ginger, as you know, is not my favorite thing. I can find that kind of burny. Um, this was not burny at all. It didn't, didn't hit me in, in the, the anger notes, the way that ginger usually does. So I really liked this. And I think that um, as silly as it sounds, you know, if you're not a mixologist or you don't love cocktails the way we love cocktails, you know, the idea that you twist this, you express this lemon twist and then you can discard it because it's it doesn't need to be in the drink. People are like, how much of that are you going to get it? Uh, the first sip was very like mm -hmm. umptious and lemony and kind of coated your mouth with the oil itself. So like the rest of the drink was like super smooth and like just bright enough. And maybe that's why the lavender didn't hit so much is because through. of the extra mm -hmm. lemon. I'm not sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the lemon gives it just a nice kind of aromatic quality as you're taking that first sip and uh, everything's coming together. I kind of went back and forth on this. Like I, I liked it. It was piney in a way that like... um like an American IPA, like a West Coast IPA is going to be kind of piney uh, there from the hop. So it's kind of interesting in that stance. And of course, we love our gin martinis here at Drink the Movie. So I thought that this was this was pretty good. And I kind of went back and forth between really, really liking it and just thinking it was OK, but definitely can agree is when that ice started to melt a little bit, it kind of mellowed those flavors out, it's kind of melded them together a little bit. And I thought that that was that was pretty good. Again, we were just kind of guessing on the amount there of the yellow chartreuse. You could totally pare that down a little bit if you want less of the pine. Uh, or mm. you could go go bananas if you want to uh, really go after it there and uh, get some extra pine uh, into that. But it was good. And I think it's going to be perfect accompaniment as we make our way through the labyrinth, Michaela. So let's do this. Let's take a quick break and we'll be right back to chat about this week's film, Labyrinth. TriStar Pictures announces the collaboration of three extraordinary talents. Jim Henson, creator of The Muppets and Dark Crystal. George Lucas, creator of the Star Wars saga. And one of the most innovative forces in modern entertainment, David Bowie. <laughs> If you've not yet seen this 1986 classic flop done by Jim Henson, 
Mm-hmm. I'm telling you now, we're going to talk about all of it. <laughs> so um, you've had plenty of time to watch it and you should watch it because it's amazing. And, um, but yeah, we're going to talk about all the things. If we're you talk- haven't, go press pause now. Go make yourself up a, a cocktail with the yellow chartreuse because it's also amazing. And then mm-hmm. come back and we're going to chat about it. We are going to chat about it. Yeah, you've had plenty of time to watch it. You might have just watched it in the movie theater. It was just back in the theater, which is what prompted us to chat about it. Although on a side note, we did not make it out to the theater uh, to see it, unfortunately. Uh, But yeah, uh, plenty of time because like you said, Michaela, this came out in 1986. It was directed by Jim Henson. Uh, You know, that Jim Henson from the from the Muppets there uh, directed by him. And it stars Jennifer Connelly is playing Sarah, the worst babysitter ever. Dear Lord, Sarah, what are you doing? Uh, David Bowie is playing the Goblin King, Jareth. And there are lots of Muppets. We'll talk about some of those as we get through the story. Uh, So Jim Henson directs this, Michaela, in 1986. Jim Henson also directed another classic, uh, arguably better film, 1982's Dark Crystal. Uh, So he is given another shot here at directing this uh, family adventure uh, fantasy kind of story, right? And how do we know that Dark Crystal is better? Well, Dark Crystal, Michaela, was made for $15 million, and it came back in with $45 million. Box office returns tripled the budget. Pretty good. What about Labyrinth, though? $25 million. You have 10 extra million dollars. What can you do with that, Jim Henson? Uh, You can lose $10 million. Only brought back $14 million here. So uh, this is more along the lines of a cult classic there, Michaela, in terms of Labyrinth. So a lot of people could be potentially maybe more familiar with Dark Crystal just because it was more commercially successful. But people that love Labyrinth love Labyrinth. Oh, we do. We do. I mean, there is no comparison. And you know why? Because Labyrinth has David Poey in tight pants singing. Thank you. You're welcome, America. You're welcome, world. (laughs) You're welcome, Um, world. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because the same year that I watched Labyrinth for the very first time, I also watched The Dark Crystal. And all I remember Mm. is at the end being really freaked out because they were all the same or they were like versions of themselves and the the animatronic... Main the character Chris, had this. The creepy. Dark Crystal kids are pretty creepy. They are pretty They're creepy. They're so looking. creepy, like with the eyeballs and the. Mm, I don't know. Here's here's what I find interesting, right? Jim Henson also did the Muppets, which are arguably like the cutest, wackiest, like most lovingest like creatures ever to like grace mm-hmm. the the puppetry you know screen of our time, right? Like you know everybody loves like the the banter between Kermit and Miss Piggy and like Gonzo. Where did he come from and all this stuff, right? They're like mm-hmm. sweet and loving and. And adorable and then you get both of these films that are like creepy and weird and fantastical also really good but just just i know i don't know it's like the it's like a like if you were descending into the dark web of pup tree you know it's like <laughs> this is like the next level for sure for sure yeah and i think a labyrinth you know kind of by the end of it almost turns itself into like a, a muppet uh movie more so than uh, this adventure, definitely more so than uh, Dark Crystal does. So uh, we'll talk about that as we get into it. So let's talk about the story a little bit here. Michaela, we are at the park. We are with uh, our our main character here. Her name is Sarah. She is played by Jennifer Connelly. She is wearing like a like a like a very fancy like Victorian era dress. She's uh, talking all this uh, Victorian era uh, sort of dialogue there, and she stumbles upon her words. She's hanging out there with her dog, Merlin. Best dog ever, uh, maybe, but unfortunately they're going to get caught out in the rain. So Sarah is going to have to run home, uh, and she gets told the bad news. Sarah, watch your baby brother. Oh, I can never remember that line. You have no power over me. <coughs> Oh, no, Merlin. I don't believe it. It's 7 o'clock. Come on. Come on. Watch your baby brother. Uh, We go out very rarely. You're late. You're an hour late. How dare you? It's pouring down rain. This poor dog is sent to the garage because he's covered in mud. Um, And, you know, you got got David Bowie singing in the background, right? Like, no one can blame you. Because her whole thing is it's not fair. (laughs) It's not my fault. This is... Um, it's it's not okay. A little whiny, and her, to be honest. Yeah, she, she is a little whiny. I mean, I don't know how old she's supposed to be. Um, she's Jennifer Connelly was actually 16. 16. 16. Yeah, 16? I think 16. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that's kind of neat. Um, I I don't remember being that whiny, but I didn't have a wicked stepmother who had a baby screaming uh, while they went out. Um, her dad 
uh, is just kind of like, here, take care of the baby. We got to go. You're, we're running late. We'll see you later. And she's like, this sucks. So they go into the parents' room and the poor, poor Toby, he, he, he looks, he looks probably like he's, he's old enough where he's crawling, but he's not quite walking yet. And he's got mm. this like, uh, I don't know, orange and white striped track suit thing that he's wearing. He, so he looks half like a baby and half like an inmate. It's, I don't know, but he's really upset and he won't stop crying. And Sarah's yeah. really fantastical, you know, she comes up with this, I don't yeah, know, fantasy has. like on the spot that starts to materialize around you. Yeah, she has all these stories. Yeah, Toby, Toby is upset. It's because uh, his favorite bear in the whole world, Lancelot, fell out of his uh, crib. But bad news, Lancelot really is Sarah's uh, teddy bear there. She's got all the teddy bears like like lined up in this little holder there. And they all have like very like medieval, like fantasy realm sort of names. I really like it does like this shot over like her bookshelf. It has like Alice in Wonderland and Wizard of Oz and Grimm's Fairy Tales there. So it's, it's definitely setting up that Sarah uh, is one for a mind of like these fantasy adventures and you know that's that's where she wants to go with it you know she does she doesn't want to watch her half brother who wants to do that he's crying causing a ruckus stealing stealing her teddy bear she wants to go off and uh read these stories and enter the dreamland and what are you going to do you're watching your kid you're uh or watching this kid you're going to be like uh hey goblins come take my kid away i do like uh it because she keeps kind of like trying to say it right like she's like oh goblin king come take toby or whatever she says i don't know but and then it keeps like flashing like to this little group of goblins and they're like she almost said it she almost said it and then she finally says whatever it is that triggers david bowie to come to your house uh there you go say david bowie's name into your mirror three times and he'll show up uh that's what happens he turns from an owl into a person and he says all right baby's mine let's go you're him aren't you you're the goblin king I want my brother back, please, if it's all the same. What's said is said. But I didn't mean it. Oh, you didn't. Please, where is he? You know very well where he is. Please bring him back, please. Yeah, uh, and it's interesting because Sarah immediately is like, oh, no. She probably said a different word if it was not a G-rated film. <laughs> um, but she's like, oh, no, 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 I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I need to have him back. This isn't cool. Um, like, no, I didn't mean it. I, mm. And he's like, what said is said. And she's trying to bargain with him. And he's like, look, I'll tell you what, if you can make it to uh, where he is, he's in my castle in the center of this labyrinth. And if you can make it in 13 hours, you can have him. But uh, you only have 13 hours. And then he's going to become a goblin. He's going to become one of mine, one of mine forever. Right. And then all of a mm -hmm. sudden she's like looking out the window from her parents' bedroom. And then she's in the middle of wherever they are, whatever the land that is. We don't know much about this world, but it's like this fantastical place. And so now she has to, you know, find the, the entrance to the labyrinth, which looks just as hard as finding the way through the labyrinth. I mean, it looks like it's 35 miles. She's got 13 hours to go like 35 <laughs> miles and, and, and half of it is, I, I don't know. I, it, it looks like it's a really long way. And she's really, um, I, she goes through these emotions uh, like a 16 year old girl, I guess, where in one second she's crying and begging and the other second she's like, it doesn't look that hard. I bet I can do this. Let's, <laughs> yeah. you know. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I have to say, Sarah never seems to be uh, fully convinced that this is going to be that difficult or that she's that upset that this has happened uh, in any sort of stretch of the imagination. But I love um, there she's looking out to rights with uh, Jareth there, the Goblin King, uh, looking out over his realm. And it's like this like map painting kind of thing. And then eventually they're like standing in front of it. It looks really, really cool. And yeah, the labyrinth is is there kind of laid out uh, in front of you. So we see Sarah, she's going and we're going to meet kind of our first uh, little, I guess, I guess he's a goblin uh, kind of like goblin uh helper sort of thing there hoggle there i love that uh he's uh just wandering around he's like beating up like these fairies he's like uh slapping them out of the sky or he's like shooting them out of the sky she's like what are you doing and then one bites her <laughs> i love that it's kind of fun and playful but he's going to basically show her the entrance to the labyrinth and get her set on her way it's hopeless asking you anything not if you ask the right questions how do i get into the labyrinth Ah, now that's more like it. You get seen there. You are uh, really going in there, are you? Yes. I'm 
afraid I have to. Yeah. Now, I love the opening, the opening, like, first 20, 25 minutes of this movie is really special to me because um, the, you meet all these really amazing characters. Um, Sarah has to learn a lot of lessons through this. It's kind of like a Wizard of Oz almost, except she's mm. in a labyrinth instead of a yellow brick road. And I feel like um, she meets people that she doesn't necessarily take with her the whole time, but, like, even trying to find the actual entrance. So she's inside the labyrinth, but she's down this really one long hallway, and it looks really creepy and weird and all of the all of the things are covered in like a shimmery dust that sparkles i don't know who made the set mm -hmm. for this but it's really cool um she meets cool. this cute little worm who tries to explain to her that things are not always what they seem you know um don't yep. go that way hello <laughs> and he's yeah. so cute he's trying to like give her a cup of tea and she's like no nah, i need to figure out how to get inside the labyrinth and so she learns a couple of lessons right away like you you need to not make assumptions you need to things are not always what they seem you need to pay attention if she had just asked the right mm -hmm. question this movie wouldn't have existed because she would have gone straight to the castle if she'd gone left but she didn't go left she went right um but she didn't ask the little worm the right question never go that way oh Thanks. Oh, if she'd have kept on going down that way, she'd have gone straight to that castle. Yeah, thank yeah. goodness she didn't go that way because that would have led straight to the castle, he says. Um, so yeah, she's she's going. It's it's going through kind of these different sections of the labyrinth, uh, right, basically. And uh, it keep kind of going back and forth between like her like journeying like through these different sections. And all the sets look really, really cool um, there as she's going. There's like one where it has like, it's like Jareth's like face in these stones, but it's like a perspective kind of thing because as she moves across, like it turns into mm -hmm. his face and then turns away from his face. So that's pretty cool. And then it's going back and forth between her journey um, and Jareth in the castle, right? He's kind of watching and the goblins are running around, running amok, just having a good time, which is going to give, you know, David Bowie the opportunity to sing a couple of songs um, in the film. I think he does five uh, numbers there in the movie. So that's always a good time. If you're going to have David Bowie uh, in your film, I guess that's the reason why there. But yeah, I love the little worm character. Uh, he's pretty cute. And you know, we're just meeting all these other characters, right? We get to meet uh, like the door knockers. Um, we get to meet like the the helping hands. That's the worst one uh, for sure. She ends up. <laughs> um, what do they call it? They call it like an like an obliette. I don't know what that Obliette. is. I, def I definitely wouldn't have known what it was when I was five. Maybe that's a word that you learn. I you've never used that word uh, in your life ever since learning it at five, uh, Michaela. I guarantee it uh, there. But she's going down the the tube there with the helping hands, just these creepy creepy hands, and she meets back up with Hoggle who's supposed to take her back to the start of the labyrinth. He is. Um, so Jareth, for whatever reason, he really doesn't want her to win. And we don't really know why. Um, you know, he he's a not a baby, I guess, he to turn a into a goblin. He turns, I guess. And, and so there's this whole like canon, like if you go down into the, into the rabbit hole of what is the labyrinth, right? There's all this idea that maybe <laughs> as you was, do, as you do, as you do, maybe there was this army that he had built with a million Sarah's and a million Toby's from all space mm. and time. And that's how he created his goblin army. But, um, he, uh, bribes Hoggle and he says, Hey, look, I, I, I he's really scared of Jareth. Uh, Hoggle is kind of a coward and he knows that about himself. He's like, look, he scares me. He's threatened to put me in the bog of eternal stench. I, I'm going to lead you to the front of the, the front back to the beginning of this labyrinth. And, um, you know, there's this trust versus not trust kind of relationship between Sarah and Hoggle. Sarah immediately like thinks that they're friends and Hoggle's like, I'm not your friend. I'm going to screw you over the second I can because Jareth <laughs> scares me to death. Like, um, but she she continues to have faith in him and mm -hmm. um, he doesn't quite do what he says he's going to do. He doesn't quite lead her to the front. Um, you know, she, she kind of gives him uh, like a plastic bracelet um, and because he loves shiny things. And he says, I'll, I'll take you as far as I can go. And so that ends up being like 20 steps before they meet their second friend, uh, this very large beast named Ludo. He mm -hmm. looks he looks like if. He looks like, like if, a if, snuffleumpus, snuffleumpus, yeah, snuffleumpus, and and like a like a three toed sloth, like we're uh, like paired Mixed up. It's, together, it's kind of like a, kind of like a kind of like a, a mixture of those. Yeah, he's uh, caught in a trap, and a couple of the goblins or whatever are trying to like get him down out of this trap. And Sarah comes to his rescue, and uh, that's nice because it doesn't seem like Ludo ever really had a friend, right? So you have you have Hoggle, who's a friend, who's a terrible friend, terrible friend, is going to keep doing the wrong thing all the time. Uh, get out of here. Hoggle. But then you have Ludo, and Ludo is a good friend. Good friend to have in the uh, labyrinth, I will say. Friend? 
That's right, Ludo. I'm Sarah. Hmm. Sarah. Yeah, he has a bunch of skills. He's really big. He's scary looking. He's not scary, though. He's a very sweet, sweet, scary looking. He can call rocks. the rocks. Right. Yeah. And that that comes that comes really important later. Um, so they they and, and Hoggle takes one like he listens to Ludo like scream one time and is like, I'm out. Goodbye. And so he <laughs> runs away um, and he runs back into Jareth and Jareth is like, look, I need you to go back and find her and I need you to give her this present. And it looks like a peach. We all know that it's not a peach. He's like, mm -hmm. I need you to give mm -hmm. it to her. Um, and just so you know. If uh, if she ever kisses you, I'm gonna turn you into the prince of the land of eternal stench. Um, and we we haven't seen this place kinda, yet, kinda but weird. it sounds real bad. <laughs> Apparently, it's so bad, like you dip a toe in and you're gonna smell horrible for the rest of your life, and that doesn't sound good. Um, yeah. I mean, Hoggle's not the best looking of uh, individuals in the first place. He's kind of got like boils and weird things on his face anyway. So I don't know. Not being good looking and smelling bad, probably not a good combination. I don't I don't know if I blame him for being scared of Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. Fair point. Fair point. Yeah. You don't want to go to the bog of eternal stench. That is a terrible name for a place. It's the kind of place that you don't want to go uh, for sure. But they have to go there, you know, if they're going to make it to the castle. And uh, luckily, yeah, luckily, Ludo has that skill, right? We mentioned he can uh, call upon the rocks and he does and it kind of builds like a little uh, pathway to get across the swamp you know without without dipping your toe in there so you don't uh, smell of this uh, eternal stench uh, so that seems good but bad news is there is a little bit of a uh, gatekeeper uh, bridge keeper uh, sort of character here uh, called Sir Didymus uh, who's like this little like fox guy he's pretty fun and he has a noble steed a dog called Ambrosius uh, who looks an awful lot like Merlin I will say that's pretty fun he's gonna ride that dog around but uh, eventually, uh, Sir Did Didymus, what's his name? Yeah, Sir Didymus. Didymus. Sir Didymus. Uh, you know, he going to come along for the cause, I guess. He sees yeah. some promise in Sarah, and he's going to join up with the team. Uh, Hoggle's still a terrible friend. Hoggle, what are you doing? But uh, Didymus, he seems good. He seems good to have yeah. in a fight. He is amazing. He reminds me of my old dog, Mitzi, because he's actually a, like an anthropomorphic fox terrier, and Mitzi was a fox terrier mix. So whenever he talks, I'm like, man... If Mitzi were alive, she'd, she'd tell him what's what. Ah, the air is sweet and fragrant and none may pass without my permission. Sir Didymus like lives on the other side of the bog of Eternal Stench. And he doesn't think that it smells bad at all, which I think is really interesting. He's like, the air is sweet and fragrant and none may pass without my permission. Because he's like the gatekeeper of this thing. So they they end up letting him go. And then they're like, he's like, I want to join in. So they're walking through, they're getting closer and closer. And Jareth is getting very nervous. He we see shots of him uh looking at her through his little crystal. And it's this uh it's like a it's like a two or three inch in diameter um crystal ball that he's looking at. And the the handwork is amazing. Now, uh, fun fact. David Bowie really tried to do all of these fun things and hold the balls in a certain way and make them like shimmer and shine and float around and look like they were floating, but he was not uh, very good at it. So they hired mm -hmm. uh, like a magician to do it for him. So there are, anytime he's holding the ball and doing it, it's somebody else's hands, <laughs> like <laughs> behind that, that's standing somehow behind uh, Ooh, David Bowie okay. as he's doing it. Um, so you don't notice it until you know to look for it. And then you're like, wow, that's that looks kind of weird. It, it, it It's interesting. So but mm -hmm. he keeps looking at Sarah through this uh, crystal ball and he's like, she should have given up by now. Why isn't she giving up? Because apparently Sarah uh, has a bunch of lessons to learn. But one of the things she doesn't ever do is give up in this quest. She never says I've, I've, I'm, I'm done, even when all of these things happen. So Sir Didymus and his royal steed. Uh, Ambrosius, they all join in. They're they've been walking for a while. They get hungry, and this is Hoggle's chance. Hoggle has met back up with them, um, and it's his chance to give her this peach-looking thing, and uh, he does much much to his his own beguilement. He's really mad at himself for giving yeah, it to her. Even says like he doesn't want to give it to her. Uh, he's not going to give it to her. He doesn't want to. But then, yeah, eventually uh, kind of folds. And if you're on an adventure uh, and you're going to fight your uh, enemy who stole your baby half brother and they give you something to eat, don't eat it. Don't eat it. Because uh, what's going to happen? You're going to eat it. You're going to fall asleep. You're going to lose a bunch of your time. Uh, you're going to have some weird dream about going to a masquerade ball. Uh, there's a bunch of people there having a good time. Jareth is trying to dissuade Sarah. She, he's saying stuff like, uh, if you give up on your quest, I can 
you know, I can grant you whatever you want, right? You don't want, you don't want that kid. That kid was crying, is being annoying, stole your toy. I can give you what you really want, Sarah. But Sarah, six to her guns. She says, nope, got to do it. Got to see this through. Uh, give me my brother back. And she wakes up uh, basically in a junk pile. And this is maybe uh, the coolest part of the movie because she's at like this like dump, like this garbage dump. And it kind of like turns into like her bedroom at the house. And I love there's like the old trash lady and she's like going through Sarah's stuff and be like, junk, junk, your stuff's terrible. <laughs> what, are, what are you doing? I love it. Yeah. No, I loved this. The, the, these like these two scenes put together are both like the most like beautiful and creepiest part to me of this whole movie. Now, we should talk about when when the goblins come to take Toby, it's probably the scariest part to watch as a child. But you get this far in and a whole other creepiness like factors into it, right? Like mm -hmm. the masquerade ball and Jareth and her, he's like trying to tell her that um you know, he's in love with her. He's trying to get her to 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 dance with him, and it's that just word. this really creepy space. And then she realizes um, that sh she's in this weird trance. Um, she mm -hmm. looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. She's in this ball gown. I mean, it's very much like what I would think of as a beautiful princess and like a handsome handsome devil. Like, uh, and, and it really, I, I think, for most. Uh, people who identify as women who grew up watching this, that is their idea. It's still like the big poofy sleeves and beautiful, long, like boofy bouffant dress and, and this guy with a mask and how hot that is. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the junk lady is freaking amazing because she is like, uh, she's, she, we don't know how big she is. She's probably only like three feet tall, but her, the junk that's all over her back is, is bigger than the blue banana. It is huge. And she ends up going into like this tent, but when she gets in, it looks like her room and the woman walks in behind her and is like, everything that you've ever cared about is right here. And it is, it's all of these toys that she loves. And the woman seems to know a lot about all of these toys they she knows what she called them like uh, these, mm. you know her flopsy mm -hmm. bear and mm -hmm. and her betsy boo and like all of her all of the things and the treasures that she was playing with at the very beginning of the film when she was really angry about having to watch toby are all there and she can play with them but one of the things that was left in the room that probably jara should have thought about was the story of the book legend it's this little little like three by five little a uh, red leather book bound book mm -hmm. yeah and she sees it and she remembers and she starts to read it and she's like oh, i've i've traveled you know to the center of the castle beyond the goblin city to take back the child that you have stolen and she remembers and she's like i can't be here i gotta save toby and as soon as that happens like the walls start to cave in the woman is gone we never see her again and all the junk just kind of dissipates she sees her friends they're calling for her and she's trying to crawl out of this pile of junk I really love this scene because it's so symbolic about what she ends up choosing. And she was so mm, mad and mm -hmm. she was so at the beginning, she was so into her life and what she wanted and, you know, how her fantasies and her ideas of a story and who's the right person and who's the, who's the bad guy in a story. And at the end of the day, she was giving all of that up to go save her, her little brother. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. So uh, she comes out of this fog, uh, you know, uh, all the better for it, I think. And she's going to meet back up with her friends. And at this point, Jareth is uh, done lost his mind. He's like, what do I have to do to get uh, this Sarah or this version of Sarah? If you go down uh, Michaela's rabbit hole there, um, uh, what do I have to do to get this lady to stop? Well, I really only have one kind of option left, right? She's totally going to get to the castle if I don't send out my army. So that's what happens. She He sends out the goblin army. Uh, they're going to come up to a big confrontation, right? You got Sir Didymus. You got uh, Ludo, you got uh, Hoggle there, and they're having a fight uh, to end all fights in terms of this uh, labyrinth town. Um, at this point, it basically turns into like a, a Muppet. It's very kind of like zany uh, kind of a acting. I think it loses a, a little bit of its of its tone. It kind of turns into like this Muppet thing, which is really fun, uh, a good time. Uh, but eventually, our team of heroes gets the one up because Ludo uh, gonna gonna use that skill again. Uh, he's really good at using that skill. Gonna get those rocks. It's gonna chase the goblins out of there, and it's gonna give Sarah an opportunity to get into the castle but a little bit of bad news there is that castle is set up like that uh that that painting that famous painting of like the staircases that don't lead to anywhere they all they all kind of like go in a big circle that's kind of what the castle looks like and that seems not great <laughs> sarah what have you done that's generous everything everything that you wanted i have done you asked that the child be taken 
I took him. You cowered before me. I was frightening. I have reordered time. I have turned the world upside down. And I have done it all for you. Yeah, it's a room that's actually modeled after uh, M.C. Escher's Relativity, um, which is a very famous um, kind of sketch. Uh, Escher is amazing. Um, he, you should look him up. He's awesome. But there's a picture of that in Sarah's room, and you see that at the beginning. And of course, this is kind of the final piece to the maze because she is a human, so gravity works on her. Gravity does not seem to work on Jareth because he's magical and creepy, um, but it also doesn't seem to work on Toby. So to there are these amazing shots. I don't know how they did it. Um, and this looks so beautiful. There's a couple of part. There's a couple of scenes where you're like, man, the, the the special effects did not did not translate well after 38 years. But this scene, I thought, still is just rich and and beautiful because you have have these shots of uh, Sarah trying to like find Toby in this and retrieve him from this Escher painting that they're walking through. And he mm -hmm. is like upside down. He's playing with one of the crystal balls and Jareth is like right under her uh, on the stairs. And as he's going down the stairs, she's going up the stairs and it just looks so cool as you hear Jareth like sing this song within you and how he can't live without her. And, he, she's so precious to him and yet he's i don't know wants her to fail it's really i i my, you know as an as an older person looking back on this i'm like you're sending a lot of mixed messages to this girlfriend that you're trying to have man pick 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 one what do you want pick, pick a lane pick a lane uh yeah for sure but you know sarah you know is remembering back all of the lessons that she has luckily for her she was reading a book called the labyrinth and she finally remembers that line remember back from the start of the movie when she i uh, couldn't remember the line she remembers it uh it's something about like you have no power over me uh, she tells jareth and that is enough to break the spell she gets toby back and she goes back to her own reality leaving jareth in the dust take that goblin king uh all is well that ends well right michaela we are back home now toby you is safe are. and sound and sarah uh has uh, has learned her lessons right don't take things for granted don't have your head in the clouds but it's still okay to have a bit of fun and fantasy in your life right that's right um i love i love it where she ends up giving giving toby lance a lot for good um he's so tired that poor kid he's been up for 13 hours like yeah. um he thought uh, he was crying before sarah come on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now his head's about to explode. So she she gets him down and she goes back to her room and she starts to take down some of the pictures and things, which at the time I was like, why are you doing that? But um, her friends kind of show up in her in her mirror. Um, she leaves them all uh, behind to go to have this final battle with Jareth in uh, in the Escher relativity painting. Right. So she mm -hmm. says, hey, I, I got to go do this on my own. And they said, well, should you need us? you know, let us know. And of course they come back and say, do you, you know, should you need us? We're around. And she gets kind of tearful and she's like, I am always going to need you every now and then for no reason. I'm just, I will need you every now and then. And they were like, oh, well, why didn't you say so? So she turns around away from the mirror and they're all there. And there's just a giant party. Ludo's there and the fire people are there and all the goblins who are apparently good now, they're all there. Everyone but Jareth yeah. is there. Jareth is not Jareth allowed is inside. There. He's Jareth become a, bar a barn now. owl. Watching him now. That is a pretty nice looking bar now, I will say. You know, pretty good, pretty good. Um, he does like fly into a window. I hope that was safe for the owl. I hope the elaborate theme was was being safe for the uh, stunt owl that they had there uh, right. flying around. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of a, the end of it, right? It's just it's just an adventure. It's a fun, um, like uh, the fantasy like epic adventure for kids. Uh, and that is pretty fun. That's pretty fun, right? You go to a labyrinth. I love kind of like like stuff that has like this element of like like puzzles and stuff like that. So from that standpoint, it's very fun. You're meeting a lot of crazy characters and you know who doesn't love like the Muppets and uh Jim Henson Studios and all that stuff creating these uh these uh different characters and stuff. They all look really cool. They all have kind of their fun, like quirky, like Muppety personalities, uh, which is really good time. So uh yeah, that is labyrinth. So I can definitely see uh or if you grew up with this, this would be a good one. Uh, you know, one that you would hold near and dear to yourself for sure. Uh, I don't know if it's as good as a dark crystal. Uh, again, we'll have to talk about that someday, maybe. But <laughs> but this one's this one's this one's pretty fun. This one's pretty fun. And you know, David Bowie. I mean, to his credit, uh, he was he was really like leaning into this. You felt like David Bowie was like, I am the Goblin King, uh, for sure, one hundred percent. Oh yeah, no, he did a great job. I mean, I think we got some really great performances. The, the, there weren't a lot of actors. 
Um, I mean, if you go and you look this up, right, it's got five people. <laughs> we've got David Bowie, we've got Jennifer Connelly, we've got the baby who played Toby, and they only had one baby. They did. They usually do the like twins or triplets because of the employment laws um, mm. with like mm -hmm. children. Um, I don't know what they did to keep him crying for the entire time. I hope he's okay. I hope he's not traumatized. <laughs> um, and then there's the people who play his uh, uh, Sarah's mother and father. That's it. Everybody else is a Muppet that is voiced or um, puppeted, right? I mean, um, and those are special talents in and of themselves. So I, but I think they really did luck out with having uh, somebody as talented as Jennifer Connelly at, at the age of 16, playing all these emotions really well. And David Bowie, he is Jareth. I mean, he's, he's amazing. Um, I mean, I don't know if, if we could have done any better i can't imagine anybody else being that person um even though they did mm -hmm. do quite a bit of casting i think before they finally got him and then they rewrote some of the pieces so that he could sing and have all of the have all of the uh kind of the, the musical pieces to it that make the film for me i it's mm -hmm. so good yeah for sure um and this movie is really well beloved uh, i mentioned kind of the the poor box office returns but obviously you know kind of kind of home video it's hard to it's hard to get a real read on uh what box office dollars meant because uh you know back in the day of uh, vhs and vhs rentals and video stores and stuff you know a lot of things picked up you know legs kind of after that and labyrinth spawned a bunch of stuff right so there were a bunch of books there were a bunch of like comic books and uh like i don't know like novels but like like reference books about the labyrinth which is pretty cool and there's been like talks of doing stuff like uh like stage shows like musical uh kind of thing that's not quite come to fruition yet there's talks about doing like like a sequel or like a revisit of that i know um uh, Jennifer Connelly has said that you know she's been in talks off and on to to come back and do something for it, which would which would kind of be fun, I think, to to go back to that world um, and somewhat you know especially and to see it you know kind of kind of in like a more modern age uh, telling of that mm -hmm. story, I think would be uh, pretty fun. So um, yeah, that is Labyrinth, Michaela. You've had this one. Uh, I don't know if you had it on the schedule. Like I said, that kind of uh, that Fathom Events showing of it really kind of spurned it on. But this has uh, been one of your favorites for a long time. So, uh, what do you think? Any uh, kind of parting thoughts about Labyrinth? Why should people go watch this? Um, I think you should go watch this because it's a fantastical story. We don't have a lot of fantasy stories um, that are um, original, yeah. and I think I think mm -hmm. this is this is really special in that sense. It's got a lot of childlike wonder to it. Um, but it also can be fairly adult, like as an adult, you're going to enjoy it as well. The, um, again, the puppetry and like the way the world that's been created, uh, Jim Henson had just a, such a special way about doing that and being creative mm -hmm. and how, uh, characters were portrayed and what their look, what their look was. And that was, that's just really cool. Um, I, I just really love this. Now I will say. I thought I was having this great parent moment and I was like, oh, when I was your age, Stephen Michael, I loved this movie. Uh, my son says it's too scary. He doesn't like this. Like oh, he'll, okay. I've let, full disclosure, I've let him watch Jaws. Jaws is, Jaws is apparently less scary than this film. So take that with a grain of salt. If you've got a really <laughs> sensitive kid about bedtime, this is probably not it because the Goblin King can come and sleep <laughs> under your bed. I don't know. Well, um, well, I mean, Jaws keeps you out of the ocean, but this is going to haunt your dreams for sure. Labyrinth does. <laughs> yeah, for sure. uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is. It is kind of kind of special in that sense, right? You have Jim Henson there who was able to create all of this magic. And this came out just a couple of years before, you know, Jim Henson passed away. I think he uh, passed away in 1990. I think um, George Lucas was a producer on this, apparently wrote a bunch of the script and things. So you can get like like these hints of this like like high just you know desire to tell like like family you know and children's like fantasy stories um there and it harkens back to those books that we saw in sarah's uh book stand right was wizard of oz and the grim's fairy tales and and mm -hmm. all that stuff so so pretty cool pretty fun little adventure i will say and i will also say that the 13th hour cocktail also pretty good so if you're going to watch labyrinth make sure you mix up one of those yes do that uh, I appreciate you, uh, Brian, take, going down this labyrinth of uh, mystery and adventure because um, you've not seen this film before. Um, I mean, True. I think if you if you if you have seen The Dark Crystal and that's what you watch, that's probably just going to be your favorite in general because of the nostalgia behind it. Mm -hmm. But I do yep. think that this one is good. And I, I am sorry that Jim Henson didn't get to see the underground like groundswell that happened in this this cult like lovingness that occurred after long after this film was made um he did not get to see how amazing it is it, it, it you know there's tons of 
Jareth's and Sarah's at comic cons now all over. And there's tons mm-hmm. of stories yeah. and backstories and ideas and canons around this world that was created and all of these things. And it wouldn't have happened um, without this, this movie being made. And I feel like if, if, if Jim could see that he would feel a lot more placated by the fact that, you know, yeah, it didn't make a lot of money, but it has touched hearts and lives for, you know, 38 years now and continues to do so. Exactly. And at least uh, Brian Henson there, who was uh, on to uh, voice Hoggle uh, there and kind of took over uh, for his uh, father after his passing away, was there to kind of see uh, what his uh, father's uh, legacy led to for the Labyrinth. So, yeah, that is the Labyrinth from 1986. So let us know what you think about that. Let us know why the Dark Crystal is better, uh, hands down for sure. Um, and let us know if you have a 13th hour cocktail. Just kidding. Let us know why Labyrinth is great uh, or not great. You know, let us know whatever you think about Labyrinth. Uh, we definitely want to hear that. So you can do it on our social medias. That's at Drink the movies on Instagram and X and Threads and Blue Sky and Facebook.com slash drink the movies. Go to drinkthemovies.com if you want uh, pictures of our cocktail, uh, episode recaps, recipes, links to all of these things. That's all there on the website. Go there uh, and check that out. And you want to make sure you're uh, following along if you want to get some extra podcast stuff. Patreon, that's the best place to do that. We've got the Dune 1984. Uh, episode that was the uh, bonus for the month that's at patreon.com slash drink the movies a lot of fun uh cocktail hangouts and chats and uh extra episodes all that stuff it's a great way to support the podcast and we appreciate our patrons very much over there uh michaela if they're not subscribed to the podcast if they're missing the usual drops on mondays and thursdays where do they need to go to get subscribed can they leave us reviews what can they do to help support the podcast that way so every single one of us probably has a rectangle uh, that we call a cell phone uh, or a mobile phone. And you should look that up. You should go to where you are listening to us right now. We are on Spotify. We are on Apple Podcasts. We are on Good Pods. We are everywhere. Um, You can go find us. We are Drink the Movies. You can hit subscribe if you haven't done that. If you really like what you hear, you can leave us a five-star review. All of those um, distribution of Podcast companies have a way in which that you can share all of this stuff on social media. Uh, do that if you're if you're so inclined. We can only do what we do because of you all and your listeners and you as listeners make it happen for us. It is the best job in the world. I am so grateful to be able to do this with my bestie every week, and it's because of y'all. So thank you so much uh, for continuing to listen to us and drink the movie's love out there. That's right. Absolutely. So thank you so much. Uh, Let us know. Yeah, all the labyrinth things. And thank you for joining us. And we'll talk to you next time on Drink Drink the the Movies. movies. Nothing, nothing, (laughs) tra-la-la. There's so many good lines. It's a lot of good lines. I like she calls Hoggle Hogwarts the whole time. Is that where Hogwarts the name came from? I don't know. I mean, time time will only tell. Time I don't know. We'll have only... to ask J.K. Rowling someday. Mm. Well, yeah. See what she has to say about anything. Hard to say. I'm going to go with yes, though. Yes, definitely yes. 100%.